On April 12, 2024, there was a small sensation. British Defense Minister Grant Chaps said that he does not rule out the delivery of a prototype of the British combat laser to Ukraine. And it's not necessary to wait for 100% readiness of this weapon. Although earlier it was reported that Britain does not plan to supply such weapons to Ukraine, especially since the British Army will receive the combat laser no later than 2027. Immediately, Russian media in one voice raised the idea that the laser weapon was not effective, that it would be a tidbit for Russian missiles, and that the West was using Ukraine as a testing ground. In this video, we'll try to give an objective analysis of what's behind this statement of the British Defense Minister. Spoiler! The delivery of a prototype of a combat laser to Ukraine is more than just a delivery. Watch our video till the end, and you'll understand what we're talking about. It's going to be interesting. To be specific, Grant Chaps stated the following, quote, I have decided to accelerate production of the Dragonfire laser system because, given two major conflicts, one at sea and one in Europe, it could have huge implications if a weapon capable of, among other things, destroying drones becomes available. So Britain can use its combat laser to fight the Hussites in the Red Sea and to fight the Russians in Ukraine. Recall that on January 27th of this year, a drone of the Houthis attacked the British destroyer HMS Diamond in the Red Sea. The ship destroyed the drone with the help of the Sea Viper SAM system, but the Houthis claimed to have damaged the ship. Be that as it may, the destroyer was already at the British military base in Gibraltar on February 10th. In any case, the danger from Housatan drones is quite real, and Russia is now an existential threat to the entire West. Now, about what the British Dragonfire battle laser is. On January 19th, 2024, the British government website reported that the UK Ministry of Defense conducted new tests of Dragonfire laser weapons against aerial targets at the Hebrides Range in Scotland. Back in early 2017, it was reported that the UK Ministry of Defense ordered a contract worth £30 million, which is about $37 million, to develop a prototype laser weapon. The purpose of developing such a prototype is to see if directed energy technology can provide an advantage to the country's armed forces. And obviously, the proposed delivery of Dragonfire to Ukraine fits into that concept, to understand whether laser weapons can give an advantage to the UK armed forces. So yes, the Russian propaganda is right about that. Ukraine will be the battle testing ground for these weapons. But why is that a bad thing? The test will be conducted by British specialists with British money. If the tests are not successful, well, all the costs are on the British side. If successful, it's a huge benefit for Ukraine, so Ukraine won't suffer either way. So what's wrong with that? It's known that Dragonfire tests at the Scottish test site demonstrated that the accuracy of the laser beam is equivalent to hitting a one-pound coin from a distance of a kilometer. The diameter of such a coin is 23 millimeters. The cost of the shot was only 10 pounds, or $13. That's much cheaper than destroying a drone with an anti-aircraft missile, which costs tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions. By the way, here we debunk the thesis of Russian propaganda that the range of dragon fire is one kilometer. In the message of the British Ministry of Defense was only said that the accuracy of the laser beam is equivalent to hitting a coin of one pound from a distance of one kilometer. So if the target's two kilometers away, the accuracy would be 46 millimeters. But the report says it's a line-of-sight weapon and can hit any visible target. So it's not over the horizon, and in open terrain, that's 5 kilometers. So it's more logical to state that the range of Dragonfire is not 1, but 5 kilometers. According to media reports, Dragonfire power is 55 kilowatts, and the laser beam is focused from 37 separate channels of 1.5 kilowatts each. This, of course, is inferior to the power of American combat lasers, which already reached 300 kilowatts, but it's enough to disable drone and missile optics and burn through the hull of a drone or cruise missile. There are several problems in the use of laser weapons that are holding back their delivery to the troops. The first is the heavy reliance on weather. In fog and rain, the effectiveness of such weapons drops dramatically. But now it's spring, followed by summer, and Ukraine has no rainy season, so for a considerable amount of time, the weather will be favorable for testing laser weapons. The second problem is the need to focus on the target for several seconds until the laser beam does its job. Recall that the target is moving, and here the power of the laser beam is very important. The higher it is, the less time it takes to keep the beam on the target. Russian experts cite the following calculations. The drone covers one kilometer in about 18 seconds, and this, they agree, is 
quite enough to destroy it. But a cruise missile will fly this distance in four seconds, and that may not be enough time to destroy it. But first of all, we said above that the range of dragon fire is not exactly known, and the mention of one kilometer refers to a completely different characteristic of the weapon, its accuracy. Secondly, the British Ministry of Defense published an image of a mortar mine with a burn-through hole, which, judging by the image, is very thick. Certainly thicker than the hull of a cruise missile, which is basically an airplane duralumin fuselage. The velocity of a mortar mine is about 300 meters per second, and it travels the same kilometer in less than four seconds. So either the Dragonfire's range is more than a kilometer, the power of the laser beam is sufficient to burn through the hull of a mortar mine in two to three seconds, it's more like both. The range is higher, and the laser beam power is sufficient. Of course, Dragonfire is unlikely to destroy Iskander or Dagger missiles. They have a powerful heat-insulated coating, which a 55-kilowatt laser beam is unlikely to be able to destroy. But Dragonfire should be able to cope with any drones and any cruise missiles. Now about the thesis of Russian propaganda that Dragonfire will be a dainty target for Russian missiles. We have no doubt. Of course it will. But will they destroy it? That's a big question. Of course, laser weapons today have significant dimensions. It's the laser itself with the mechanism of targeting and tracking, and radar, and a diesel generator with fuel to power the laser. Add to that the maintenance personnel and protection, at least from bullets and shrapnel, so most likely Dragonfire will be located on a 3-5 to five ton truck, like M35 or M1079. So we will definitely not see Dragonfire near the front lines. It'll be easily destroyed there. For sure, the British combat laser will be used to protect some strategic facilities deep inside Ukraine. For example, the same power plants that the Russians are now actively hitting. Or bridges. We think that Dragonfire can easily deal with Shahid drones, which Iran supplies to Russia, flying at an altitude of up to a kilometer at a speed of 200 to 300 kilometers an hour. It can also deal with Caliber or X-101 cruise missiles, the latter are launched from bombers TU-95. At the same time, as we said above, the destruction of these targets will cost a few dollars, not a minimum of several tens of thousands of dollars. But to detect dragon fire for the Russians will be very difficult. After all, it doesn't give itself away either by the exhaust or gunpowder gases, by fire or by sound. The laser beam itself is also generally invisible. Since, unlike an ordinary light beam, in a laser beam, photons move strictly in one direction. The laser beam can be seen if it encounters some obstacle in the form of dust, smoke, fog, raindrops, and scattering occurs. Of course, there are still a lot of questions. For example, how will Dragonfire work if several targets are approaching at the same time? This problem is related not only to the time required to destroy a single target, but also to the cooling of the laser system for the next shot. Therefore, it needs to be tested in a real-world environment. Therefore, the UK's interest in testing Dragonfire in Ukraine is understandable. In addition, if the tests are successful, it will firstly accelerate the finalization of this weapon, and secondly, it will dramatically increase the demand for Dragonfire, if it has a mark, effectiveness proven in real combat conditions. If London's ready to send Dragonfire, it means that it's already maximally ready has already proven effectiveness and wants to beat all competitors. And that's the US, Russia, China, Israel, Turkey, the country that will be the first to show that it has its complexes that demonstrate maximum effectiveness during real combat operations will win the prize. Therefore, from this point of view, Britain's actions are as pragmatic as possible. And here we can believe that the British really want to send this complex. But Ukraine is also interested in this. After all, it doesn't lose anything in any case. There's another aspect of supplying dragon fire to Ukraine. It may be even more important than the actual transfer of laser weapons to strengthen air defense. Remember how Great Britain was the first in early 2023 to announce its readiness to give its modern tanks to Ukraine? Before that, all Western countries did not want to take such a step. And only after the British statement, the matter was moved from the dead point and Ukraine finally received modern Western tanks. Britain was the first to supply Ukraine with its modern Storm Shadow cruise missiles, then came the French. It's quite possible that even now with its move, Britain is trying to force other countries to provide Ukraine with the most modern weapons. For example, Germany shares its Taurus cruise missiles. We've repeatedly said that Ukraine's defeat is also the defeat of the entire West. It's the loss of its dominant role in the modern world, 
with all the deplorable consequences for it. What do you think? Will the UK put its dragon fire in Ukraine? And what will be its effectiveness? And what will follow? Share your thoughts in the comments. It'll be interesting for us and other viewers. And that's all for today. We'd be glad to have your thumbs up for our work and subscribe to our channel so as to not miss any other interesting videos about modern weapons. See you soon.